Yes, so as you know, here's our course web page. In the schedule, you can find where we are now. We're at the general introduction, which I have open here in the presentation mode. Yes. So, uh, welcome everyone to this Kickstart course. So, what's this course? So day one is sort of a big picture day. We talk about high performance computing and some other practical skills. It's mostly lectures and demo. So you're sort of here watching. And it's quite generic. So most of what we cover applies to any, any university you'd be working. Day two and three is more specific. So it's about using a computer cluster. So traditionally, this would be called the HPC, or High Performance Computing Cluster. But we're not really getting to the high performance computing part. We're getting to the computing part and being able to, say, run one thing very many times and so on. And we use the Alta University Cluster Triton as an example. But what we say will be applicable to others. So if you see the examples here, and you can probably work through them on your own cluster, and then you can be very well equipped to adapt, adapt it to your own, uh, own sites cluster. So who's attending? So we have multiple universities here, and we're all using different clusters. But like I said, um, we will be very careful about explaining things, so you'll be able to know what's specific to us and what's applicable to other people. So who's here? So we are Alto Scientific Computing, also officially known as Science IT. We are running this course, and we're running it in collaboration with other universities as part of the Finnish Computing Competence Infrastructure, which used to be known as the Finnish Grid and Cloud Infrastructure, and before that, the Finnish Grid Infrastructure. Basically, it's the network of universities that do scientific computing and it's the teams that support it. And there's one talk in collaboration with CSC that's later today. So some practicalities. Mm. So yeah, we already talked a little bit about how things works, but why are we doing this Twitch thing? So our point is that we have a live stream broadcast like a TV production, which means that anyone can watch, which is something that well, people don't really do with Zoom meetings. And we have pauses for exercises. So it's like a commercial break. So then at that time, you go to your own groups and you do things. So we have a Zoom for the people who registered from Finland. And in here, there'll be different breakout rooms where you do the exercises and you can get help depending on your university and with different people and so on. Um, so with 260 people registered and more than 200 watching the stream right now, it's going to be difficult to get as much of personal interaction as we would otherwise. But we'll do the best we can. Um, it's better to say things than not. And you'll learn about how you can get more one-on-one -on -one support later on. So within the workshop, there's different things you'll experience. There's talking and demonstrations, which are on the stream here. Then there's type along, where we'll be doing some task, and then you can type and follow. There's exercises, which you can do different ways. And there's breaks. And we'll basically be following along, tell you what's going on, try to make it clear. And if you ever get lost, if you open the HackMD and scroll to the bottom, you should find information about what we are currently doing. Let's see, the chat and communication. So yeah, please don't use the Zoom chat for questions. There'll be too many for us to keep track and they'll get lost, and even if we answer the uh, what we write will just go into nowhere, and no one can ever see it again. Instead, we have HackMD. So here, there's indications of the sections we're on, the parts of the sections. You write questions in bullet points. There's answers more down. 
there can be multiple answers per questions and to ask new ones at the bottom. I think most of you have already found how to switch between edit and view mode. Please try to stay in view mode if you're not actually editing. We think that helps makes things a little bit more clear. Um, let's see. So it's important to not get overloaded here. If this is anything like our previous courses, there will be a lot of information in this HackMD. People will be asking so many questions. So try to leave it open, but realize the information isn't going away. You can go back and read it later. So think, do you want to, do you need to read the answer to your question right now, or should you come back later? And often it will be come back later. Um, and like I said in the icebreaker, the HackMD is completely public. Anyone in the world can find it if they know the right thing. And it will be, there'll be times it will come on the screen here. So don't include any names or anything there, ever. Um, in other workshops, we would say, if you need personal help, write a breakout room number and someone can go there. So the icebreaker we've already been doing. Okay, let's see. I sort of already talked about where do you focus because there's just so much information. So the screen share in lecture is the most important thing. Um, and then there's your own type along. And then there's the HackMD, which has things. So HackMD is more like a passive um, watching thing. And then of course there's the lesson web page and so on which you'll be following as needed. So the screen arrangement. So you may notice we have this really interesting portrait style uh, stream. So that's because we realized that the landscape doesn't really help people that much. I mean, you're not watching a movie here. This is a interactive workshop. You need a lot of screen space to do your own work. So for that, we realized to set a vertical share, so you can put it on half your screen, and the other half, or actually slightly more than half, is available for you to work. And then after a lot of effort, we optimized the right size so YouTube would not downscale it, and so on and so on. This example here is using Zoom and not Twitch, but the same thing applies to Twitch. If you're watching from Twitch itself, you can put the view into theater mode, and it will scale like this a little bit better. Or if you're watching via our own, um, our own other site, then it should be ready for you already. And then you have plenty of space to share or to have your terminals where you're working, the web page, maybe HackMD open in another window so you can follow it, and so on. So this will get a little bit weird for a few talks today that are based on slides that are landscape style, but we will do the best we can. Mm, yeah, so there's more than one way to take this course. So first off, we have far more material than we can possibly cover. So we adjust to the audience. So if we don't cover everything or we say, okay, we're not gonna do this, that's normal. Don't panic, don't think you're missing something. All the material is available for self-study later on. Also, not everyone needs to take the same path here. So some people may want to just watch to figure out how like, how this cluster even works. Like, what, what will I be doing in a few months or a few years? And then you're ready later. That's fine. Some people may be active and try to do all the exercises. And some may be um, advanced and want to do even more exercises and go further than we go. All of these are fine. You can adjust to how you would like things. Oh, I guess I didn't mention here that everything is recorded and will be put on YouTube so you can follow along later. So it's fine if you miss anything now. Um, yes. So we're a community here. So please try to be respectful and helpful to everyone in the course, especially your fellow learners. So there's four little pieces of advice here I can mention. So one, everyone's at different levels. That's okay to be expected. Everyone will be both teaching and learning. 
take some time to ask each other how things are going. Like, um, mm, you know, are do you need help and so on. And when something isn't going right, speak up right away. If you can't hear us, if the screen's too small, whatever, let us know right away. Okay, some final notes. Okay, here it says recording. So this course will be recorded and put on YouTube. Um, because of the way we're doing it, there's no risk for any of your information to be on YouTube. It'll just be us, the instructors. So we don't give you credits for attending this course, but there is this online course, Hands-On Scientific Computing, that covers a lot of the same material and will allow you to get credits. And then please join us. Um, we are staff at Alto, but anyone here can help us in um, well, supporting the computing for the whole university.